OpenAI dropped GPT-5 with massive fanfare, claiming that it's PhD level expert in anything. But here's the kicker. And I've been waiting to make this video because I didn't want to give you my first impression. I wanted to really let things settle in and give you a very full review. But here's the point. It can't even solve basic second grade math. So when given the simple equations of 5.9 equals X plus 5.11, GPT-5 confidently spat out X equals negative 0.21. Now, any elementary school kid knows that that's wrong. So if this is supposed to be our PhD level expert, why are 3,000 users already petitioning to get the old models back? Why is OpenAI scrambling to control the narrative when their flagship release is getting roasted across the internet? So today I'm going to break down some reasons why GPT-5 isn't the revolutionary leap OpenAI promised and why this might be the beginning of the end for their dominance. Now let's dive into this today. Welcome to Startup Pack, I'm Spencer, and here at Startup Pack, we love to train software developers as well as build custom software solutions for companies. With a decade of executive leadership as a fractional CTO and 25 years in software development, I have mastered transforming tech teams and products. All right, guys, the AI world was supposed to be celebrating right now. And so instead of watching one of the biggest tech disappointments of 2025 untold, unfold in real time. So remember when I called out the things in the past before when the bubble crashed and burned? Well, those same warning signs are flashing bright red for OpenAI's latest breakthrough models. So Sam Altman made this big, huge announcement hyping up the release of ChatGPT5. And frankly, he had just released GPT OSS and they should have just left it at that because that's actually pretty good. And I'm going to give you guys a review on that here really soon because I actually like their open source model and I'm a big fan of them releasing open source but instead he goes and makes this huge claim with all these kind of uh, big like oh it's coming right like the Death Star is coming because we're going to be amazing AGI he could have just left well enough alone and been like hey we're gonna give this latest release but like Sam like made this really stupid decision here and he couldn't have possibly been w more off the mark and this did not age well and I think Think you can look this up and find that it's like Swiss cheese and it's like all these other things like there's there's been a ton of people roasting this and for good reason because OpenAI marketed GPT-5 as a legitimate PhD level expert in anything yet it spectacularly fails at tasks that any second grader can handle now as a lot of people said it's amazingly brilliant and let amazingly stupid so let's give you an example here now if you want somebody who's definitely gonna roast people you can go follow Gary Marcus he gives you a lot of good stuff and he particularly like me does not care for chat GPT Sam Altman or OpenAI. so he's in good company with me here but so somebody came so Gary Kerr came to say say solve 5.9 equals X plus 5.1 and this you know five, subtract 5.1 from both sides and you get X equals negative 20 you know negative 0.21 obviously clearly this is wrong right and uh you know so like this is this is definitely definitely wrong and you know we're seeing a lot of different edge cases like this that are hitting this now this isn't a kind of an edge case right this also is not some complex math problem right this is something that should be basic arithmetic that's taught in school but it really highlights how these uh llm models work right this is the same model that OpenAI claims will revolutionize healthcare education and scientific research so so the fact that this PhD level AI can't handle simple subtraction raises some pretty serious questions. Now what I can't figure out why they haven't done is why they aren't forcing this off and says, hey, this is math. We should send this into one of the big math algorithms, right? Because there's a lot of online math systems, right? So I'm curious to see why it is that uh, you know that these are happening all over the place, right? Because we're seeing them over and over again, and we're you know, and and even as Gary Marcus is roasting me, says, "Can you feel the AGI?" And of course, tag Sam Altman. Now, within just days of GPT 5s release, uh, you know, tens of thousands of users have signed a petition demanding OpenAI bring back the previous models. See, the thing about it was there was a dominant reaction on Reddit and Twitter that there was not a excitement. It was major disappointment and frustration. Users report that GPT-5 actually felt like a downgrade from GPT-4.0 in many real world scenarios. OpenAI's own subreddit, typically a fan club for their releases, became flooded with complaints and criticisms. The company had to quietly restore access to the older models because the backlash was so intense. So this level of user result, revolt is pretty unprecedented for OpenAI. They've actually had a pretty strong fan base, right? Kind of like the early fan, Apple people jumped off the Apple bandwagon and jumped on 
onto uh, OpenAI's wagon, right? So despite OpenAI's claims of improvement, GPT-5 still makes incorrect claims 9.6% of the time. Now, you think that I'm making this up, but this is actually their own data. Let me get this up here. So you can actually see that according to their own data here, factuality on GPT production, and they're saying the percentage of incorrect claims, they're saying, yay, it went down 3%. Okay, so you're still saying that 10% of the time, this is actually incorrect, right? So, but they're just heralding that uh, that they think. Now it does go down, they're saying that it goes down, and this is their own numbers, but they're saying it goes down to 4.5% when you add to thinking. I, I have a different take on this, um, but if you look actually number of collect correct cl claims per response, you can see it's pretty much still on par. So honestly, where they're saying that these are a lot, of, like they're bragging that these are better claims, I don't know that I'd be bragging that one out of 10 things that it says are inaccurate. To me, anything that gives, gives you one out of 10 bad answers, would I would never trust in a production system. So while it is slightly better, it's still nowhere near where I think it needs to be. The system card also reveals that 44% fewer responses have, quote, at least one major factual error. That's 44%. Now, this still leaves a significant percentage of responses with major errors. So when you're dealing with medical diagnosis, legal advice or financial decisions, even a 5% error rate would be absolutely catastrophic. And remember, those thinking models are only reserved to people who are paying over $200 per month. And that number is only going to go up. It's going to get more expensive because the money train, the gravy train is going to run out. Now, the confusing model lineup still makes no sense. And they said they simplified it, but there's things that still just don't add up. So GPT-5 release, if you look at the APIs, there's suddenly four different models. There's GPT-5, GPT-5 mini, GPT-5 Nano and GPT-5 Chat. This fragmented approach suggests that OpenAI is throwing everything at the wall to see what sticks rather than developing a single breakthrough model that they promised. The multiple variants makes it unclear which one users should actually use for their applications. Now, if you have things that are unclear in your systems, make sure you reach out because here at Startup Pack, our specialty is connecting systems so your company can work like a well-oiled machine. Check out startuppack.com slash Spencer because we can help you get your systems connected. Now, OpenAI has priced uh, GPT-5 so aggressively low that it's likely to spark an industry-wide price war, which suggests that they're desperate for adoption. When a company prices their revolutionary product at basement levels, it usually means the technology isn't delivering enough value to justify premium pricing. The pricing strategy indicates that OpenAI knows they can't compete on quality alone. This race to the bottom approach threatens the entire AI industry's business model and sustainability because they're the largest. Smart competitors will use this opportunity to focus on quality while OpenAI burns through cash trying to maintain their market share. And remember, right now OpenAI is burning over 13 billion dollars a year. So in my years of tech, I've never seen as a playbook that looks like this where a company knows they're burning cash so quickly. So while OpenAI claims that GPT-5 is their best model ever, it's actually performing worse than competitors on key benchmarks like Arc AGI-2. Grok 4 Heavy is already outperforming GPT-5 and it was released before it. The company seems to be cherry picking benchmarks where GPT-5 performed well while ignoring areas where it failed spectacularly. But again, remember, it's the PhD level everything. They didn't need to say everything. Like that's the part that I don't understand. Just say, hey, occasionally some of our stuff grades PhD level. Like that's all I had to say. But when they say PhD level everything, it just ends up making them look bad. This benchmark manipulates, manipulation is a classic sign of a company trying to spin bad results into good marketing. So when you can't win on genuine performance, you change now. You change how performance is measured, and that's exactly what we're seeing here. So, despite all the hype about advanced reasoning in GPT-5, it still struggles with basic chess rules and logical reasoning. Researchers testing the model found that it made illegal moves and lo and lost track of the game in almost every single game that they played. So, for a model marked as having PhD level reasoning capabilities, it can't even follow the basic rules of chess, which I taught to my kids at three and four years old. So, any mechanical engineering. PhD PhD could outperform GPT-5 on basic spatial reasoning and following and rule following tasks. So these fundamental reasoning failures call into question OpenAI's entire approach. So while they spent two years trying to train this model, it came out and it was markedly 
worse, if better, only slightly, and even in other places worse. So GPT-5's image processing capabilities are embarrassingly bad for models claiming to be fully multimodal. When asked to count a simple object of images uh, or identify basic relationships between visual elements, the model fails almost every time. Testing with basic parts and holes problems shows GPT-5 performs worse than humans and even some older systems. The visual reasoning problem suggested that OpenAI simply bolted together separate systems rather than creating a true multimodal understanding. So the fact that OpenAI is marking this as a breakthrough in multimodal AI shows how disconnected they are from the actual capabilities of their system. Now, there's corporate desperation here, right? And industry insiders report that OpenAI employees are building models for their own needs, not for how most people actually use AI systems. The company apparently doesn't use their own trial router internally, which explains why the user experience is so disconnected from real world needs. Sources suggest that there were significant internal disagreements about whether GPT-5 was ready for, ready for release, but pressure from leadership forced it out. The fact that Sam Altman personally insisted on the release despite technical concerns shows a company prioritizing hype over substance. Now, OpenAI's relationship with Microsoft has reportedly frayed, removing a key technical ally that has been with them through the whole time. When a company starts making decisions on CEO enthusiasm and how he's hitting the podcast series, right? Because we've seen Sam everywhere. Suddenly his face came up and everyone's like, oh, we're about to release GPT-5 because you can tell Sam's doing the podcast rounds, right? Got to go drum everything up. But rather than work on the technical merit, he's out there hitting the podcast circuit, right? And that's what you see from Sam Altman. So despite GB ChatGPT having nearly 700 million weekly users, OpenAI no longer has a clear technical lead in the AI space. Competitors like Anthropic and Google and even newer players like XAI are rapidly closing the gap and in a lot of cases surpassing OpenAI. And I would argue most cases they are surpassing them. So if this was their flagship model and we're going to have to wait another two years for their next terrible flagship model, I think you're going to see some serious problems. I think that company valuation that they're trying to argue at $500 billion looks increasingly disconnected from their actual technical capabilities and market position, especially because they've lost all of their technical leadership. The majority, I think all of the C-suite is gone from two years ago. I think most of their technical leads are gone and they've been poached by other companies. Many of OpenAI's best technical people have left to start either competing companies or take that crucial knowledge with them to start something else. The AI industry is realizing that large language models may not be the path to actual AGI that everybody thought. And now Sam Altman is saying, well, I think AGI just isn't a good word to use, even though he's the one who's been pumping it for the last two years. So OpenAI's business model depends on maintaining technological superiority, but that advantage is evaporating quickly. In fact, I think it's gone. A devastating new research paper from Arizona State University proves that ChatGPT's five reasoning capabilities are, quote, a brittle mirage that vanishes when pushed beyond training distributions, end quote. This research validates that what critics like Gary Marks have been saying for years about the fundamental limitations of large language models. Now, again, Gary Marks himself builds AI, so he's like me where he's a realist. I'm not saying I hate AI. I'm not saying we don't use it. I'm saying you have to understand how large language models work and you have to be able to know what their limitations are. The study shows that chain of thought reasoning and LMs break down completely when faced with problems outside their training data. So what happens is, is you can string together reasoning, right? But if it fails on the first step, all it's going to do is keep reasoning on bad data. So that doesn't really help you, right? So you reasoning only helps if you have a good set of data. So if you're trying to train against a set of data that the LLM doesn't have, it's just going to actually get worse. So this finding explains why GPT-5 can seem smart in some contexts, but fails spectacularly in basic tasks. And that's the part that I don't understand. I don't understand why these systems aren't building themselves to actually just hit and be able to recognize that it's starting to make up data and then be able to just stop and say, I don't know this, right? I would rather get an, I don't know this than get, having it feed me some BS that I then have to decide whether it's real or not. So the research suggests that no amount of scaling or fine tuning will solve these fundamental architectural problems. For OpenAI, this represents an existential threat to their entire business, that whole 300 to $500 billion of valuation. 
So OpenAI's entire strategy has been based on the belief that making models bigger and training them on more data would eventually lead to artificial general intelligence. And this is not right. GPT-5's disappointing performance suggests that the scaling approach has hit a wall and isn't delivering the exponential improvements we saw from GPT-2 to GPT-4. And I don't even know if I'd totally call those exponential. You might, right? But the company has reportedly spent over half a trillion dollars pursuing the scaling strategy only to discover that it doesn't actually lead to real intelligence. Industry experts are now openly questioning whether attention, uh, attention mechanisms and transformer architecture are sufficient for true AI. The failure of scaling means that OpenAI needs to fundamentally rethink their approach, but they've lost all their tech talent, so all they can do is try to make it bigger and try to train on more data and that's not gonna work for a path forward. This represents a complete vindication of researchers who argue for hybrid neurosymbolic approaches and explicit world models over pure scaling. Now, if your company has systems that aren't connected and you need help, reach out, Sarah Startup Pack, our specialty is connecting these systems to help your company work to maximum efficiency. So check out startuppack.com slash Spencer. Now, what do you guys think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? I love to have a great conversation. So make sure you comment and leave your thoughts down below. Here at Startup Pack, we love to train software developers as well as build custom software solutions for companies. And here's some great information about our services. Hi, I'm Spencer, a fractional CTO. With over a decade of executive leadership and 25 years in software development, I've transformed technology teams and products for businesses just like yours. As you are fractional CTO, you get the strategic guidance of a seasoned technology executive without the full time commitment. Perfect for companies ready to leverage cutting edge technology without expanding headcount. My team at Startup Hack has already built advanced AI agents for small and medium businesses, automating complex workflows and delivering advanced ROI to human workflows. We specialize in creating custom software that connects your systems into a single coherent technology ecosystem. Our development approach focuses on tangible business outcomes. For one client, we developed AI powered workflows that cut days off of human processes. For another company, by connecting multiple systems, we reduce processing time to increase their ROI by over 75%. We we don't just write code, we architect solutions that scale. Whether you need cloud system architecture, data integration between legacy systems, or custom AI agents that automate your unique business processes, my team delivers results that exceed your expectations. Having led technology for a lot of companies and launched seven successful brands of my own, I bring battle-tested expertise to your business challenges. Our specialty is turning technological complexity into business advantage. So if you're ready to harness the power of AI and custom software to drive your business forward, let's connect Together, we'll build technology that doesn't just solve today's problems, it positions you for tomorrow's opportunities. Technology leadership, decades of experience, AI powered. Reach out today and we can help you. Check out startuppack.com 